Hi, and welcome to the next installment of Distilled Demographics. This time we're going to look at a question that many people ask, and it's a good question. Where exactly do population figures come from? Well, of course, we all know that uh, a census is pretty much the bedrock of demographic statistics. And countries do a lot to publicize these and get the best possible coverage that they can. Uh, here, for example, are some posters from uh, Ghana, India, Belarus, Cayman Islands, and Thailand. And just for fun, I tossed in a Norman Rockwell painting of the census taker. Censuses have been going on for a long time. Um, here is a census of Ireland from 1901. It's a family of seven living on a farm, and one of the things I noticed, kind of interesting, is under education, the only thing that's asked is read and write. And this one's a little more up to date, Bangladesh in 2011, of about 149 million people. Uh, one of the interesting things about that, and it's kind of why I, I put the map on the side, is that uh, Bangladesh is about the same size as the U.S. state of Arkansas, or in Europe, Greece. So it really tells you just how densely populated that country is. Now, census taking is a complicated and pretty difficult process in many ways. And sometimes the results are less than perfect. So here's an age pyramid for India in 2001. And we can see something is a little bit wrong at the bottom. That zero to four age group the babies and children born in the last five years is really too small. So some things have to be done, and in this second pyramid, we can see that uh, what happens after you smooth the population. That's one option, but there's other things that can be done uh, to adjust census data. In, in many ways, there's like two basic divisions among the countries of the world in terms of the availability and the quality and completeness of data which, of course, is something we all depend on. Here, for example, is uh, the, we the website of the Statistical Office of Norway. And now, these are all good, solid numbers. You know, when we're born, we have a, a birth certificate. When we die, we have a death certificate. And most of the industrialized countries of the world have complete data, and we use them as is. So here's an example of some of those complete data. In Norway, we have births and deaths reported for 2011, and the same for Germany. Those are the numbers that we use. Uh, there is an interesting thing there. Uh, notice how the number of deaths in uh, Germany is more than the number of births, because they've had such a low birth rate for such a long time. Another very valuable measure in, in demography is the number of children that women have in their lifetime. And uh, we measure this with the total fertility rate, as we've mentioned in a previous installment of, of the videos. And uh, the total fertility rate is the average number of children a woman would have in her lifetime if the birth rate of a particular year remained constant. Now you can see there's quite a difference between Germany and Norway. About 1.36 children in Germany and 1.88 in Norway. That's quite a difference. Now let's take a look at data reported by developing countries which for the most part is, is incomplete. But countries do try to register births and deaths. So Nigeria reported to the United Nations Statistics Division that in 2007 there were 1.8 million births. But looking at the Nigerian population, we know it must be more than that. So the, the true estimate from Nigeria is 6.2 million. And then you can also see that Colombia gets about 85%, it's thought, of their births registered. So they're doing a little better. They've been at it a little longer. So what do we do for these developing countries of Africa, Asia, Latin America? Well, if you don't have births and deaths, you can always go out and ask people how many babies they've had, right? <laughs> well, that's, that's really what is done. And there was a program that started in the 1970s, a global program called the World Fertility Survey, which asked women of childbearing age, how many children have you had, uh, when did you have them, is, is that particular child still alive, to get all kinds of measures of fertility and mortality 
especially infant mortality, uh, that we otherwise would not have. And that's continued today up what is now called the Demographic and Health Survey, which is one major global survey it's conducted uh, in countries usually every four or five years. And then we have others. Um, managed by UNICEF, we have the uh, Multiple Indicator Cluster Survey, which does much of what the DHS. And another major survey is the Reproductive Health Survey, which is managed by CDC. Uh, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control. Now, there is one thing about these surveys is they're not annual. It would be quite difficult to do this every single year. So some of the information we have from a country might be four, five, six, seven, eight years old. So some assumption has to be made about what the true level of their birth rate is now. So let's look at a couple of results from surveys. And the first slide, we see the Cote d'Ivoire, the former Ivory Coast. And we noticed that back in 1994, that women were averaging an estimated 5.7 children. And you can see that the TFR, total fertility rate, kind of kept going down. But the most recent survey estimated that the average number of children per woman, as you can see, was 5.0, which was up from 4.6. So now, what does that tell us about the trend in fertility in Cote d'Ivoire? And another country, uh, Rwanda, we can see that uh, in the surveys that began in 1992, uh, women averaged over six children each. And in the next four surveys, the total fertility rate came down, but it wasn't, wasn't too rapid. But now suddenly we see the most recent survey shows us that it may have dropped as low as 4.6. So there you have it. That's where the numbers come from, and you can see that data from developing countries is a little softer, perhaps, and maybe not so recent. But these are the numbers that go into many demographic studies, including our own world population data sheet, which I hope you're using, and we'll see you for the next episode.